pleasure to welcome you to another edition of Newsline. And in line with our tradition, we have stories that touch various aspects of life. I am Jennifer Igwe. Thank you for joining us. Living with disability can be quite challenging. For some, movement alone requires a lot of effort. But many with disability push hard to overcome these barriers and stay determined not to allow them affect their life goals. We have an inspiring story on a young Nigerian living with a rare form of disability and why we must be his support system. There's something we must not support is intimate partner violence. Sadly, it is one of the most common forms of violence against women and also men, whether physical, sexual, emotional abuse, controlling behaviors by an intimate partner or mismanaged rage. Sometimes such cases can end tragically. We have an incident today, one with more questions than answers. A man who killed his wife over a delayed meal. Another extreme action is taking the law into one's own hands. And mob action is a classic example of this. We have an update on the mother of four who was lynched and, and accused of witchcraft by members of her community. What happened eventually to the perpetrators of this barbaric act? Stay tuned for more on this and other exciting celebration of culture and achievements. But well, first, the news and my amiable colleague Claire Adelabu Abdurazak in Abuja is set. Hello, Claire. Nice to see you. Hello, Jennifer. And um, your green colors speak much more than I can imagine. And indeed, they resonate with me. That's talking about your green, white, green colors. Hello and welcome to Abuja and to the news. Let's bring you now the Vice President Kashim Shetima has arrived to Rome, Italy, to represent President Bola Tinimbu at the Food Systems Summit. The Vice President, who was accompanied on the visit by the Deputy Chief of Staff to the President, Office of the Vice President and other government officials, had earlier departed the Namdiaziki International Airport, Abuja, Sunday afternoon. He is expected to proceed to St. Petersburg, Russia, to also represent President Bola Tinimbo at the Russia-Africa Summit, which commences this week as well. And the presidency has reacted to what it calls the laughable and bland statement by former Vice President and People's Democratic Party presidential candidate in the last election, Elijah Tukabubakar. A statement by the special advisor to the president, Special Duties, Communications and Strategy, Dele Alake, says it is obvious that having been thoroughly defeated by the All Progressives Congress and now President Bola Ahmed Shinumbu, the, vice, the former Vice President has not fully recovered from the shock of defeat. Hence the current attempt to mischievously rake up another round of blunders that offend basic logic. The statement further says it will be recalled that in a statement, alleged Abtiku Abubakar accused the current administration of the governing APC of plotting to undermine the judiciary without providing any shred of evidence. Alaki points out that President Chinimbo won a fair and credible election, adding that the February 25th, 2023 presidential election that produced him is the most transparent election ever conducted in Algeria since 1999. So President Chinumbu and the APC absolutely have no reason to undermine the judiciary in the hope of any favorable judgment. His lawyers and that of the APC have presented very solid defense of the result of the election and are sure the judiciary will impartially deliver its ruling on the basis of points of law and evidence before it, not based on presumptuous speculations and unfounded accusations. The statement urges Atiku Abubakar to be honorable enough as a statesman to allow the judiciary perform its sacred duty without harassment and self-help, attempting to discredit it, an important institution of state. 
Now, there are indications that the highways may soon be free from overloaded trucks and heavy-duty vehicles. Now, that indication is coming as the Federal Road Safety Corps commences nationwide clampdown and exercise, it says, is a first step to curbing incessant crashes on our roads. Corps Marshal FRC Dada B made this known in a media interview in his office. Oyeyemi Ajayi has it. Driver is that he's expected to carry only 11 passengers. Is carrying more than 25 passengers in this. Come out. Come. These are sights seen on the roads with men putting the faces away as if it doesn't matter. But the danger inherent cannot be underestimated. The nationwide clampdown on truck and buses overloading by the Federal Road Safety Corps is one intended to bring the roads off dangers in line with its mandate. The same thing with the one carrying animals and human beings, or goods and human beings. When we see them, trailers, trucks, we stop them, we ask the passengers to disembark also, and then we arrange for a vehicle that will carry the passengers and take them to their destination. We are not really even focusing on putting penalty on them because that, that aspect of asking the passengers to disembark and look for another vehicle to continue their journey is enough penalty for them. With a series of cases by the call, it was discovered that most of these drivers have no business being on the roads due to lack of driver's licenses. Do you have a driver's license? Yeah? In Nigeria, the percentage of overloaded trucks and buses can reach more than 94% in the total of vehicles and can be said to be one of the major factors of not just road crashes but death of pedestrians, market men and women. Since we started this operation on uh, trailers and trucks about four months ago, we have not experienced in our record yet a single crash that occurred. And then we also work with the judiciary in some, at some locations. We set up mobile courts. Overloading is a major problem, which the FRC says stresses the road structure beyond safe bearing capacity. Hence, it will unrepentantly tackle the menace headlong to put things right. Oye Yemi Achai, NTA News. And in other stories, the federal government says it will ensure sanity in the mining sector as more investors continue to indicate interest in exploring the resource potential in the country. Director General Nigerian Mining Cadastro Obadiah Simon Nkom said this when he visited Governor Abdullahi Suli of Nasarawa State. Aliyu Tijani was there. Nasra, the home of solid minerals has continued to attract investors willing to mine the solid minerals in the state, with the latest being investors in the lithium exploration. However, there have been challenges of illegal mining, environmental degradation and insecurity due to activities around the mining sites. These, among others, are issues of concern to the state and urgent attention is required to address the challenges for the state to reap maximum benefits of the natural endowment. Governor Sule says attention must be given to environmental impact assessment as a major criterion for the issuance of license for the Nigerian mining cadastral. So I'm happy when you say you are here to make sure we work together. We are here to look at all these indices for the betterment of your own organization for the ministry for nigeria and indeed for national state and the communities where we are and that is just my dream director general of the nigeria mining cadastral obadia simon income commends effort by the national state government in harnessing the solid minerals assuring the state government that federal government will ensure investors comply with all the mining laws in the country time mining must and should be done in a regulated way it must at the end of the day be done to be able to now bring benefits not just to the communities but to the entire state and to the country at large mr Uncom says nigeria mining cadastral will continue to ensure activities of miners in the state are properly regulated for the benefit of the state its people and the entire country 
in Lafia, Aliu Tijani, NTA News. And the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, says there is no trace of animal or human transmission of anthrax disease in the country. Now, this is coming as the traditional institution advocates involvement in the awareness campaigns to curb the spread of zoonotic diseases. Livestock breeders, alongside residents of Suleja, were in a state of panic when a case of anthrax was detected in the area. In spite of the fact that measures were taken to restrict the spread of the disease, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control says there is no trace of animal transmission of the disease. Actually, we don't really we don't have any case of uh, transmission yet. However, it's always paramount for us to start preparing in case we do have that. However, campaign on the symptoms of the disease and how to manage it have been intensified on health platforms. The team was at the palace of the Emir of Suleja, Mala Muhammad Awal Ibrahim. Any animal that falls sick or falls dead, we want to get an alert. Because if diagnosis is not you know, done, it's a big risk to the livestock industry and also to the human population, especially with regard to this particular disease. The EMEA raised concerns over how monitoring the movement of animals and their health conditions we are neglected at the primary level. So we're going to do the best we can to ensure immediate enlightenment of our communities and appeal to them to give maximum cooperation by ensuring all the Fulani has men as well as gentlemen has men are also most uh, cooperative in terms of uh, the onerous task on you in out of this vaccination. The advocacy visit was also extended to livestock farms in Suleja and Tafa local government area of the state. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. And President Bola Ahmed Chinimbo congratulates former Inspector General of Police, Sir Mike Mbama Okiro, as he turns 74, commending his youthful contributions to Nigeria's development. In a congratulatory message, the President notes that Chief Okiro served the country meritoriously in various positions and made important contributions to Nigeria's development. Mike Okiro served as Lagos State Commissioner of Police during the during President Chinimbo's tenure as governor of the state, a period the president says was characterized by a smooth relationship that helped him bring in peace and harmony in Lagos. The president says the competence and successful work accomplished in the state by Chief Okiro were evident and thereby facilitated his double promotion to the rank of Deputy Inspector General of Police and later the IGP. Sao Kiro also served as Chairman Police Service Commission. President Chinimbo wishes Sir Michael Kiro more graceful years in good health to enable him make more contributions to peace, progress and development of the nation. And the Acting Inspector General of Police, Kaadi Egbatuku, has always maintained the stance of improving policing from his first day in office. Now, this he has been exhibiting in his activities as the number one police officer in the country. Now, to further solidify his dream of improved security in the country, he took his thanks to the House of God, where he also asked for guidance and wisdom as he leads the Nigeria Police Force. Our correspondent, Ingunu John, was there. Marching words with action, the acting IGP recently said the Nigeria Police will establish a quick intervention squad to tackle the menace of crimes and criminality, among other initiatives of improving policing. <music> Appreciating God for the task ahead, acting IGP Olukayode Egbetokun believes is his first step to victory. I thank God and I thank him for giving me this opportunity. And I pray that God will give me the wisdom these dance steps indeed depict gratitude to God for the elevation. Eulogies poured in for the celebrant from Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodun. He's an officer and a gentleman. I give you a little 
is a rare breed of Islam. Pastor Charles Pandey of RCCG Region 11, who took his text from Psalm 92 verse 1, reminded the worshippers of the need to always show appreciation to God. The one condition for access, if you want to, have, to, to, to be able to come to his gate and thank him and then you accept your thanksgiving, be sure that Jesus Christ knows you as his own. Prayers for the Acting Inspector General of Police ended the Thanksgiving service. But for him and his team, work has just begun. In Lagos, Hinginu, John Adams, NTA News. And the Nigerian Correctional Service notifies the general public that one Mr. Aliu Anate Raji is neither a staff nor an agent of the service. A statement by the Service Public Relations Officer Umaru Abubakar emphasizes that Aliu Raji, whose picture uh, is on our screen, does not have any authority or approval to transact business for and on behalf of the correctional service. The statement adds that uh, it is currently being investigated for forgery, false pretexts and impersonation. The Nigerian Correctional Service thereby urges the general public and government agencies to refrain from transacting business with the impersonator or any of his agents on behalf of the Nigerian Correctional Service. Now, the first step to producing efficient manpower to prepare socio-economic development and national cohesion is to have sound quality education. And incidentally, that is also President Hidembo's utmost desire. And the Director General, Confederation of APC Support Group, Kalani Mohammed, says it is on this premise that the education sector will receive adequate attention under the Renewed Hope agenda. And he was speaking at a meeting edition of lecture series organized by course four PhD students of Institute of Governance and Development Studies, Nasarawa State University. Our correspondent Yusuf Umar was there. Nigeria's education sector faces a series of challenges ranging from infrastructure decay and incident strike by lecturers at the tertiary level. With the renewed hope agenda by Tinubu's administration, Kailani Muhammad says adequate funding will be provided to education with the aim of repositioning the sector. We are assuring them that the 25% that will be earmarked for education in this country will go a long way to stop the restiveness in the universities, all these incessant strikes. With the team fostering sustainable peace for Nigeria's development, imperative for multi-stakeholders approach, speakers emphasize the need for dialogue as a panacea towards sustainable peace in the country. They have studied the theoretical concepts about peace, about conflict resolution. And what they are doing today is that they are recognizing Nigerians who have contributed and who are supporting peace building and who are contributing to unity and development. The process of peace is not just always uh, kinetic, that is, it's not just by using guns and things like that. It involves a lot of uh, dialogue, a lot of negotiations, and a lot of discussions. Some notable Nigerians were awarded for their contribution to peace building, including former head of state General Abdus Salami Abubakar, former Minister of Women Affairs Pauline Tallinn, Director General, Confederation of APC Support Group Kailani Mohammed among other recipients in Abuja, Yusuf Omar, NCA News. All right, it's time now to talk sports. The Nigeria Super Falcons step up preparation for Australia March as yellow, junior yellow greens begin bid for World Cup qualifications. We have all the details with Badi Adelaide and Sports Update. After returning to their base in Brisbane, Nigeria's Super Falcons have resumed training ahead of Thursday's game against co-host Australia at the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. The nighttime African champions have now adopted a new time for training in line with the match schedule. Well, obviously, we'll be training in the evening since our matches are going to be late in the evening here. The next two matches will be at 8 p.m., so we want to simulate that. But so far, uh, the mood of the camp looks to be in a very good place right now. 
Morocco will be aiming to be the first African team to record a win at this year's World Cup when they face Germany Monday morning. Italy will go head-to-head -head with Argentina while Brazil and Panama will trade tacos. Back home, the Grace FC on Saturday became the first team to book their sport in the final of the fifth edition of the Bayosa State Prosperity Cup after defeating Dream Boys Academy. Tunel in their semi-final counter played at the Samson Siasia Sports Complex in Agua. The Grays will now meet the winner of the second semi-final match between Agbera FC and Crusaders Feeders in the final. We work very hard. We play from the beginning, from, from our center, the first center, at Okoria Zarama Center. We, it's not easy for us. But I find myself in the final because this is my job. I know I believe my players and I believe in God. For me, I think that the Dairi government has uh, taken sports to a different level in this state. Elsewhere, Nigeria's junior Yellow Greens will on Monday begin their bid to seal a ticket to this year's ICC Men's Under-19 Cricket World Cup when they face Familia Foes, Sierra Leone, at the Africa Division 1 qualifier in Tanzania. We are really prepared because before coming to this tournament, we had about um, 13 friendly matches which um, has uplifted the game's performance, the uh, players' performance, which at the moment they are really confident of themselves. Nigeria will also go up against the quartet of Tanzania, Kenya, Namibia and Uganda at the qualifying tournament which ends on July the 29th. With sports update, Bad Day Adeleye, NT News. All right, thank you very much, Bad Day Adeleye. And we have just enough time to check on Monday's weather details for Abuja and the rest of the country. Glad to have you join us. We expect Monday morning to be relatively calm with mostly cloudy skies across the country, though few thunderstorms are expected to affect parts of Taraba, Kebi, Niger, FCT, Kogi, Nasara, and Benue, with intermittent rain showers to parts of Imo, Edo, Ebonyi, and the southeast coast. As we get to the afternoon, we expect isolated thunderstorms across parts of Taraba, Adamawa, Bauchi, Gombe, Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa, Sokoto, and Kebi. The bulk of the weather is expected over the central cities and the southern region, where isolated to widespread thunderstorms and rains are expected across the region. But few places should still remain cloudy. For update, please visit our website and follow us on our social media platforms. Thank you for watching. And thank you also for bringing the weather to us. And um, that does it for our news segment. But don't you go away. I know you can't imagine what Jennifer has in her baggage today, just after the commercials. Yeah. Now to Newsline proper. Kamal Usman, a student of Stali Utanko Day Secondary School, Kagara, Niger State, living with a rare form of disability, has been trending on social media. Newsline correspondent who went in search of Kamal brought back a story of how the 21-year-old is defying all odds and working to achieving his dream, including how the government and well-meaning individuals can support him to accomplish his life goals. Attending school with physically able students, 21-year-old Kamal do not see himself as any difference. All he ever wanted is to live his dream, regardless of pessimistic views and circumstances. Kamal's difficult journey started when he was born with a rarest form of disability that hindered the use of both his hands and legs. Despite all odds closing down on him, Kamal refused to allow his dreams to die. He begged his parents to enroll him in school like his siblings, which they did, where his brother Ibrahim would carry him on his back and trek six kilometers to school and back every day. Without hands and limited use of his legs, Kamal goes to school and writes with his mouth. <laughs>
He came to us too as a surprise when he was born. As time went by, he could not do anything else except lying on his back. We thank God for his progression. When Kamal told me to get him pencil in primary four, I also wondered how he intend to use it. As you can see now, the rest is history. As he graduated from using pencil to Bayro, no one taught him. Allah has been his inspiration. I'm in Jesus three. I think you know, I, I want to be a lawyer because I want to defend people. I thank God with way God has created me because other people with hands are like I can do better than them. God give me the wisdom to write with my mouth. His emotions took the best of him while speaking about his brother's condition and airplane out. Ibrahim was full of admiration and love for his brother. He said, although Kamal is seen as disabled, I see a strong, determined person who needs a little push. In the face of all these obstacles, Kamal says hope, defying everything that says no to him, using his mouth to write notes legibly in school just as he uses his feet to dial and receive calls. <laughs> Kamal's teachers and classmates spoke highly of him. Kamal Usman, we used to call him one in two. You know, he's a very brilliant student and someone who has passion to study. Up to this date, Kamal has been a good student, a very serious one. They have just finished their junior YA class today. I tell you, this boy performs wonders in the exam. Kamal will be the first person to finish whatever we ask them to write. He's a good boy. Sometimes we used to gist. Sometimes I used to borrow his pen, his book, and his assignment so that I should write it. Though Kamal Usman and his family hailed from Uregi, a community in Rafi local government area of the state, they are currently taking refuge at a relations house in Kagala, the headquarters of the council area, due to activities of bandits who have since sacked their village. It was a kind-hearted, spirited man that gave him this wheelchair not too long ago. As you can see, it is now worn out. We are therefore appealing to government and well-meaning individuals and organizations to come to the aid of Kamal in whatever form, so that he can be the best he can be. As it is, it is obvious that Kamal Usman may not be able to change his life's trajectory right now, as the wind is blowing against him. However, well many Nigerians can adjust his sails to reach his destination by lending their support and love to him so that he can live his dream of becoming a lawyer. Mao is indeed a hero, and if he can be so resilient, we must do all we can to support him. We can change the narrative for him and make life better for him. Quite inspiring. Hmm. Our next report is focused on a young man from the French-speaking part of Africa whose innovation has increased the number and class of musical instruments across the world. What did he invent? Kainde Lamidi will tell us. The psalmist says, Praise God with the sound of the trumpet, with stringed instruments, flutes, and cymbals. For ages, this set of musical instruments, mostly found in worship centers, have given melody to songs of praise and thanksgiving in those worship centers. Amazing, right? How then will you describe this innovation from a talented Togolese of the celestial faith? Melodious sounds coming from glasses filled with water. Anika Kovi Zidezom tells the story 
Behind this innovation was discovered during the COVID-19 pandemic. I discovered my talent on the table when we was eating, me and my friend. We was having glass cup on the table, contain a different level of water. So I was telling me, asking me that if I go and set another glass cup and pour another uh, level water inside, it can make it, it can it can give a toast. So it's from there the team uh, comes. That's where we discover the sound from different pop. That's when it switch from a keyboard to the glass keyboard. How to see and identify the glasses of water? that produce each sound. Already you know the tunes. So when you hear the tune from the glass cup, you now understand it is like you can use the glass at the same keyboard. That's how the music starts with the glass cup. Evangelist Olumude Lawson and the music teacher of the Celestial Church of Christ, Luwaju Wong Parish, said you should speak on the talent behind this musical instrument. How did he get to think about the amount of water to put in each glass is great creativity. Just need to encourage them. That's why we are bringing them to the world. Great of God, very far. I am seeing myself very far with my glass cup. Africa to the world. Now, in the previous edition, we brought you a story of how a mother of four was lynched in a community in Akankba, local government area of Cross River State, because she was accused of being a witch and masterminded the accident of her children. Knowing that you'll be curious to know the unfolding events after the dastardly act, just as we are curious to on Newsline, Maureen Leo Ajom. Will give us update. After the death of two Catholic priests, Reverend Father Daniel Omonga and a colleague in a ghastly auto crash, all met mute went berserk and killed four chiefs in the community, burnt houses and destroyed property worth millions of naira, alleging that the chiefs that were murdered were wizards. Reports has it that nothing was done to reprimand these youths. However, the gruesome mother of Madame Martina Oke, Itagbo, by the youth of this same community, suspected to be cultist. And the reaction of the Cross River State government, as well as the action of the Cross River State Police Command, were able to arrest not less than 26 suspects, predominantly youths. As a date, we have charged all of them to court based on their various levels of involvement, they have all been remanded in prison custody. That is not to say our investigations or efforts to bring all the perpetrators to book is going to be stopped. In fact, after the arrest of those 26, we'll go to more. Any moment from now, they will join their colleagues there. It's left for the law court to decide on whether or not Efforts made to reach the children of Madame Martina Itagbo, who are now displaced for want of safety following the incident, were not successful. But in a telephone conversation, they told NTA crew that the cultists are threatening their lives as well, the reason they have fled for safety. In a related development, criminal activities like kidnapping, which in the past eight years had become a major issue to contend with in Cross River State, has resurfaced again recently with the kidnapping of a medical consultant with the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital, Professor Ekanem Ephraim. But what is the security agency is doing about the situation? They've contacted the family and made a demand for 15 million. Thereafter, they stopped contacting the family. We were not sleepy, and I, I'm assuring you by the special grace of God, the hoodlums will be brought to book. So be warned, if you take part in a mob action, no matter how many you are, the police will fish you out and there are consequences. Four years ago, a little boy, Abasiafano Kingsley Dixon, was born and just a day after being dedicated 
trouble started with which made his parents to seek medical attention. The diagnosis has left them helpless. Omo Basi Edet takes the story from here. So his parents may have been heralded with so much joy, being the only boy after the birth of two girls. But barely a few months into his birth, tragedy struck as little Abase Fenen or Kingsley John developed some breathing complications and after several medical tests and examinations, the little boy was diagnosed to have a hole in the heart since 2020. He born with a door we did not notice it is only after immediately after his dedication, the Sunday Monday, Wednesday of that week, the thing started and he was breathing high. So we rushed him to teaching hospital. That was when they run the dinos and run all the tests and now tell us he has a hole in the heart. This has left the parents broken and seeking for help. Father of Abase Feneno, Mr. Kinsley John Dixon, an electrician in Uyo, Akwaibun State, says Nigerians remain his last hope. I took him to the hospital, uh, teaching hospital in Uyo. Then after then, they referred me to Kanu Wankwa Heart Foundation at Laos. So taking him down there, the, the analysis given to me by the Kanu Wankwa Foundation that the surgery was to be the surgery was to be uh, 4.5 million so it is, since i did not have the money so i just came out in order to tell the public that it should help 4.5 million naira is required to get abase feneno to stay alive and live a normal life the little boy too has this appeal for nigerians nigerian please help me the life of the four-year-old hangs in the balance if help doesn't come his way quickly. That's innocent plea. It's touching. And I know we can do something about it. The rising cases of abandoned new babies is becoming a source of concern in Benin Kebi, the Kebi state capital. This is a situation of a newborn baby girl who was found abandoned at the Federal Medical Center, Benin Kebi. Hassana Abubakar Kuku has the story. We see are for different folks. This is why some people are expending all they have to get a child, while some will deliver only to abandon the child. This is the reality of this child who was found abandoned in the early hours of Thursday, July 6, 2023, by duty nurses and midwives in the delivery suites at the Federal Medical Center, Brunin Kebi. The baby girl was left on the floor behind the window of the labor room with its placenta still attached. Joy Amedu is the deputy director, nursing department in charge of special care baby units. Because of the nature of the place the baby was picked from, uh, the baby has to be placed on treatment in order to prevent infection from setting in. She pointed out that the baby stayed at the special care baby unit for four days while the nurses and doctors worked together to ensure that she is in good condition before finally handing her over to the state's bar committee who have handled such cases in the past. The baby was discharged in good condition and on discharge the nurses educated the new care you know, giver on how to take care of that baby, including immunization, feeding of the baby, and uh, promotion of warmth. The Hisbar Committee in Kebi State are worried about the rising cases of child abandonment in the state as it records two to five cases of abandoned babies every month. We are still calling the attention of the general public to be vigilant and watch the movements and what is happening among the people so as to reduce even the, to the some level the police in kebi state are also investigating the matter what a step and hearing the news myself and some other members of this community quickly rushed to hospital to see the baby we found out that the baby is in good condition this is the baby girl that was found at fmc burning kebi who is presently with his bar committee here in kebi state and from here the committee will hand over the baby girl to the orphanage matter we should not be abandoning babies when there are people who can take care of them 
Time for more messages, more interesting features where we return. Welcome back. Oro Town in Ifelodu local government area of Kwara State came alive when sons and daughters of the area hosted one of their own. It was a reception held in honor of the immediate past Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. Anthony Forsen was there. In November 2015, Lai Mohammed was appointed Minister of Information and Culture, a portfolio he handled in the two term lifetime of the last administration until it exited in May 29, 2023. Pleased with their son, this grand reception was held in his honor. As the first political appointee of federal minister to emerge from our town, he has made us extremely proud of him. He has left indelible footprints in the sands of time of our community. A golden fish has no hiding place. Aside from his engagements and official schedule at the national level, he did not forget his background and where he is coming from. By initiating manpower development programs as well as bringing infrastructure to the area, the latest being the construction of modern child hospital and with staff quarters. The hospitals are fitted with modern high-tech medical equipment and furniture through the office of the senior special assistant to the president on SDGs. APC national leader Pabisi Akande, who spoke in Yoruba, later explained in English. I found him to be a diligent people's servant. And uh, in my speech, I advise our people in Oro particularly, because I know they belong to minority. So today, I can see our people being a minority also in Kuala State, and I begin to say that our people must be united in everything they do. When they see any one of them moving forward in a race, they should support him. For the man of the moment, he is simply humbled. There's no honor more valuable than the one that you are given by your own people. And uh, whatever you might Whatever might be their reason for honoring me, I can only thank them and uh, express my deep appreciation and gratitude for the honor they've done to me. Worth celebrating indeed. Meiduguri, the Borno State capital, stood still for a society wedding, a type that occurs only once in a blue moon, largely due to the profile of personalities that attended the event. Eminent personalities from all over the country honored Governor Babagana Umara Zulum when his son, Mohammed, tied the nuptial cord with Umar Kaltum Bukakolo. Mohammed Goni will now take us to the palace of the Shehu of Bornu where it all happened. Many parts of Nigeria literally moved to Maiduguri as former President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Kashim Shetima took specific roles as guardians and representatives of Muhammad Babagana Umar Azlum and Umi Kalthum Bukarkolo by giving nod for the wedding. The collection of finest Nigerians will continue to linger in minds of Borno citizens as not less than 11 state governors, former governors and deputies, national and state assembly members, tough government functionaries, traditional leaders, clerics, members of the business community and captains of industry, 
as well as politicians cutting across party lines converge on Maiduguri Central Mosque to witness the marriage solemnization. Led by the Imam Idenio Borno Shetima Mumun Saleh, the marriage between Muhammad Babagana Umar Azlim and Ummi Kaltum was solemnized upon payment of top gold coins as dowry. As tradition demands, the host governor Babagana Umar Azlim organized luncheon to honor the dignitaries and other invited guests at the government house Maiduguri. They must be patient with one another. They must see and forgive. Secondly, there must be mutual respect. I want to wish them well and uh, advise them accordingly not to allow a third party to interfere in their marital beliefs. I'm not sure there are many ways in any part of the country where you can see this high number of turnout of distinguished Nigerians, of people coming to my degree. This event and the whole event of all partners, of all friends of His Excellency, who have come here, have come because of the relation they have with His Excellency. Uh, God's guidance and protection and uh, success in their marriage. The groom, Muhammad Babagana Umar Azlim, was full of gratitude to the dignitaries and all invited guests for gracing the occasion. I thank everyone that came here for the marriage and I appreciate all of them. Also not left out in the wedding bash are the women folk, led by wife of Vice President Nana Kashim Shetima. Others are wives of governors and the cream of society who turn out to support the parents and newest couple in town celebrate the successful outcome of their fusion. I was amazed when I saw them yesterday, more than seven states uh, across the nation. Okay, I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for them sacrificing their luxury, their comfort, their everything, their energy, their resources for them to come down to Medjugorje. Any issue that comes up between her husband and herself, they should try to resolve it themselves and they should be patient with each other. As the forum we came out in our numbers to come and support uh, the happy couple and uh, the parents. Mm, marriage is about patience. If there is patience, that person is allies behind him. She should please take care of her husband. She should feed him very well. So I wish them the best life can offer. Wish them the very best and a lot of food. <laughs> now listen to this. He hails from Ubam Emirates in southern Borno, but was bestowed an important new title in Borno Emirates by Shehu Abubakar Ibn Umar Gabai El Kanemi in recognition of his outstanding commitment to the growth of the medical profession and health service delivery. I'm talking about the foremost professor of radiology and chief medical director, University of Meiduguri Teaching Hospital, who was conferred with the traditional title of Zana Boshima of Bernu, meaning trustworthy person in Kanuri language. Kaigama Mustafa tells us more. The first time in the history of Borno Emirates that a city show will visit the University of Maiduguri Teaching Hospital to appreciate management and staff for effective service delivery. Shehu Abu Bakr Ibn Umar Garbay El Khanemi was attracted by the outstanding performance of the Chief Medical Director, Professor Ahmed Ahijo, for turning around the hospital. This feat has translated into concrete reality as he was honored by the Shehu with the title of Zanam Shema of Borno with the turbulent attracting who is who in Borno and well wishes from across the country. They include Borno State Governor, represented by his deputy Umar Usman Kadafu, Secretary to the State Government Booker Tijani, former Minister of Health Professor Isaac Adewole, Emir Sobiu, Goza, Akira, Shani and Uba. The tabernacle formalities were performed by the traditional title holders of the Emirates, led by Shetima Kanribe of Borno, taking the directive from the Shevu. Chef of Borno, Abu Bakr Ibn Umar Garbay El Kenemi, had while presiding over the tabernacle ceremony, the confirmation of the title, the Nambul Sheva of Borno, to the celebrant. 
came about after he established him as trustworthy respect to the traditional institution and service to humanity. Family, friends, and well wishes thank the chef of Borno for conferring the prestigious title on one of them for his respect to the Emirate and service to humanity. My call to people of Maiduguri is to sustain this culture and uh, continue to support the present government. An achiever that has been so honored today, he has been distilled the title of Zanna Bushoma of Borno. Uh, is uh, something that is, I think, uh, very commendable. It is my first time of witnessing this turbaning ceremony, and it shows how diverse the culture of Nigeria is. I'm uh, here because we have done a lot in university, in hospital, and that is why the Royal Fara recognize him. This is a recognition by the people of the Emirate and at large people of the state. We, the people of Askarawa, we are very much grateful to His Royal Highness Bishop Borno for organizing us as a community. Professor Ahmed Ayijo, he is the type of person that is always looking forward to helping people. He doesn't think of himself. The news and number Shema of Borno said that the additional title bestowed on him by the Shehu will spur him to scale up service to humanity. This title of Zanna Burishema, I really appreciate and I will never let our own people down. Ahmed Ahijo, a renowned for Pesa of Radiology, is in his second tenure as Chief Medical Director in the University of Medugri Teaching Hospital. Keep up the good work, that's all we'll say. Nigeria is set for an interesting time with the unveiling of an initiative by the National Council for Arts and Culture tagged Putin Nigeria First. The campaign is aimed at celebrating and promoting arts, culture and our national heritage while fostering national unity. Oin Nayaka Oka reports that the mayor of Houston, Texas had a taste of this exciting development. Nigeria is a blessed country with abundant human and cultural tourism resources. Each ethnic group is unique in different ways. The people are tolerant, hospitable and hardworking. Analysts and experts believe Nigerians should begin to work on the attitude of putting Nigeria last. Where we miss it all is where we lost our cultural values. And for the National Council for Arts and Culture, this should be addressed with the unveiling of the hashtag putting Nigerian first movement. The major role of religion is to bring peace, is to promote unity. Our country should not be based on ethnicity and religion, but should be bounded by unity. The Director General NCAC, Utumba Ulishegu-Washewe, said, We have had campaigns before election. Elections are over. Inauguration is over. And we are still bickering head speeches here and there. The time has come. We must all come and put Nigerian first. Similarly, it was an exciting time for the mayor of Houston, Texas, and his entourage while at the dinner organized by NCAC. Besides the fun and merriment, both parties spoke on ways of developing bilateral relations. To my sister and my brothers, it is a, it's an honor to be right here in Nigeria. It is about creating a mutual relationship of respect, investments, and opportunity. We want a direct flight from Houston yes. to Lagos and Abuja. Right? <laughs> We want more trade and investment. We want more opportunities. We don't want uh, aid. We want trade. Let's partner together. Bringing 30 powerful delegations from Houston, Texas, tells a story that Nigeria is making some moves to open the door for every part of the world to come here and invest. And talking about hashtag putting Nigerian force, the mayor and his entourage had a taste of it. Indeed, we have a spectacular heritage and 
we need to sell our culture to the world because I'm sure people will love to hear and have a feel of our culture. Time for some messages. Newsline will continue shortly. Welcome back. How far can you go in search of true love? Did I hear you say any length? Sure, you're right. That is exactly what our next report is all about. A young man who traveled all the way from Lagos to Oshu State to meet his newfound lover. Did he find her? Annie Daniels will tell us. I doubt there is anyone who doesn't desire true love. So, when Toby Lola met a girl on the social media who he was sure met his standards, he spared no expense in seeing her in person. This led Toby Lola to travel all the way to Oshun State from Lagos. He lodged in an hotel. The lady was able to bring him to come to, you, to her house. In the process, the lady and her courts arrested him. Alleged that he wanted to rape the young lady. In the process, his phones were taken, uh, his ATM card taken. Uh, he was stripped naked, humiliated. He had to be forced to divulge is a pin number and uh, instrumentally they withdrew 100,000 and when they knew there was sufficient money in there before he knew it 1.4 million was removed fortunately as they were discussing as naked as he was he escaped to the police station and then give me 50 out of 50,000 50, out of its cash. cash when they give me 50,000 out of it uh, instead of it, uh, instead of telling me, see, they don't collect like 1.4 million out of it. Yes, you heard right. Toby Lola didn't realize he was being lured into a dangerous situation. The next suspect, a 17-year-old undergraduate at a higher institution in Oshun State, claims her intentions were good. Because my boyfriend told me that he wants to know the guy. I mean, I was not having any bad intention towards the guy. So, I, I, like I told him to come around. I was thinking my boyfriend wanted to tell him that, ah, guy, this, this girl and my bobo, all those, all those kind of stuff. But I don't know that my boyfriend have another intention towards the guy. You must be careful in choosing your friends, especially on social media. We have seen a lot of things that uh, we have arrested a lot of people, you know, that have fell into the hands of these social media fraudsters. And many people have even been killed. The lead suspects denied taking any money. Because they saw that I was scared. They told me to be with my hostel, even though because of this same guy. Like, like my boyfriend beat me, like he slapped me. It was this man that is a little more. more. He's not a big my boyfriend that he, he should let me go. Can this be true? Has she been involved in this kind of situation before? Is it possible to find true love through social media? There are many questions waiting for answers. Newsline will keep you updated as events unfold. Mm. A lot. We have a lot of the social media, so we have to be very careful. Very careful. Now, insecurity in parts of the north is alleged to be perpetrated, alleged to be perpetrated mostly by the Fulanese. But investigations have revealed that it is not about tribe, but lack of education and drug abuse being a major catalyst fueling insecurity in northern Nigeria. Abdul Jalil Mohammed Bawa visited a Fulani community in Kebi State and discovered that they are also victims of kidnap and banditry. <laughs> This is a typical day at a Fulani settlement. It starts with milking the cows in preparation for the breakfast to certain them out for grazing. This is a daily routine. However, a lot have changed in this narrative of Fulani in Nigeria with the involvement of some of them in banditry, kidnapping and other criminal activities. On a visit to the Fulani settlement, NTA discovered that even the Fulani themselves a victim to such act perpetrated by few among them. It is not good for a Fulani to commit a crime in society. 
especially innocent people. It is as a result of poor upbringing. Sarkin Fulani, Lami Ogarba, says one of the ways to tackle this problem is to educate the Fulani children and stop drug abuse among their youth. They will come to our settlement, kidnap us, kill our women, children, and the elderly, and demand for millions of men at ransom, which we don't have. We have to sell the few cows we have for our freedom, otherwise they kill us. He appealed to the government at all levels to treat the Fulani fairly as citizens needing equal social, economic attention and security. We've heard from them and it's really food for thought. Let's take our last break. We'll be back. Thanks for being there. Now, imaginations have continued to run rife over, over the mysterious death of six family members in Oze Nkwele, Izunaka, in Anambra State, who just moved into their new house, slept overnight, and never woke up, leaving only a five-year-old, leaving only a five-year-old member of their family alive. Ifeyinwa Daniel Upai made efforts to unravel the mystery behind this sudden death. This was the house where the unfortunate incident of the sudden death of Ifan Yuko and his family members took place at Irunku Office 1, Oze Nkwele Zonaka, in Oyi local government area of Anambra State, a place supposed to have been embraced with incitement for moving into a new apartment with the family, suddenly developed an unusual silence enveloped with imaginations of what transpired leading to this ugly development. Late Ifanyoko, a native of Amago Akebugu Okonano in Nkano West local government area of Enugu State, whose video went viral in the social media recently, died with his family members, including his mother-in-law from Umezanam in Anambra State and his new apprentice from Generator Fumes, sparing only their five-day-old baby. The family was said to have moved into the apartment few days before the unfortunate incident. It is very, very terrible. 9 o'clock, 9.30, I saw him when they are bringing all the properties they have. After then, so he told us that he he want to go um bring back her wife from the hospital because of his newborn. Relations of the deceased narrated their experience when they broke into the apartment. I enter inside uh, the whole compound. Every every everywhere is locked. Then I chat, if I if I if I nobody answer me. I just do my leg, break the door. See the generator, then I'll form. Somebody called me on phone, telling me that my brother's house is on fire. And I came there with one of my in-law. And I drive me to Boromi Hospital. And I reached there to see my brother and his wife and his family and his in-law. Some neighbors related their own side of the story as they witnessed the incident. I see three dead. I'm the one of person that help to carry the corpse. Meanwhile, the six bodies have been deposited in a morgue in Onicha, where investigations are still ongoing to ascertain the actual cause of their death. <laughs> We are following the story, we'll keep you posted. It is often said that those who teach others good virtue shall shine like stars forever. This explains why even in death, Austin Opara, a retired assistant director production services of the Nigerian Television Authority, who died at the age of 61, was accorded much respect by people from all walks of life who gathered at Umuoba community in Owere North local government area of Imo State for his final funeral. Chukwebuike 
Chuko has the details. <laughs> To mourn the veteran whose job of news coverage while in NTA took him round far and wide. First, a service of song was held in his honor at St. Luke's Catholic Church, Kubwa, Abuja. Though they may have gathered to bid one of their own final goodbye at his country home, Umoba, it was an opportunity for sober reflection as the priest in charge of St. Francis Aziz Catholic Church. Reverend Father Marcel Emeribe enjoined believers in Christ to be mindful of the life they live as to represent Christ well. I encourage every one of us that there is a place we are all heading to. Just answer God. Late Austin Opera was laid to rest at his compound after graveside rites. For his wife, children, colleagues, and well wishers, Austin Opera was a peace-loving man whose life affected people around him positively. I don't think there's anybody I can compare with my late husband because he was, he's very intelligent, very caring and loving. We have been married for a good 25 years. That was a very good man in the sense that he was, he was, he was my mentor. He was very strict. I loved him. He made sure that we all had the best education and he always preached peace that we should always being peace with one another and he always promotes peace too. It's a resemblance of his father, Pa Lawrence, Pa Lawrence, yeah. He's a very kind-hearted person. To maintain the cooperation that has existed uh, before his death. Life will not end because he's gone. They have to continue from where he stopped, especially the children. He's somebody we love so much and somebody that is very good to us in the village. He survived by his wife, five children, and a host of other relatives. May his dear soul rest in peace. Amen. That's, news, that's all for uh, Newsline today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Keep a date with us next week. Good night and God bless Nigeria. Mm -hmm.